Hello, hello, it's Karina with Phonics Emotion. Um, this video, we are focusing on the reading and writing monster and the daily handwriting routine. It is so much more than a handwriting routine. Um, we are also teaching speech to print mapping. So what sound does each letter make? We are teaching correct stroking. Um, we attend to challenges with reversals because reversals typically happen when little ones start the letter in the wrong place. And the handwriting stories tell you exactly where to start and where to go next. They're very different than handwriting routines in other programs in that in many other programs, we ask little ones to first understand language about the instructions that we're giving them. For example, go up to the skyline, then go down. What does that mean? You have to think, you have to process in order to figure out what those instructions are. And we take that away. So we go straight to the story and it's the story itself that directs the handwriting. They don't have to think about instructions or wonder or think, wait, what am I doing it right? They just listen to the story, recite the story and the story directs their pencil, tells them where to start, where to go next. And that's because the reading and writing monster lives on the left and the reading and writing monster does not want us to learn how to read and write but we are going to beat it at its game, aren't we? And we are going to move away from the monster and then he pulls us back. And then we move away from the monster and he pulls us back. And that's how we teach directionality in this routine. That when we read and write, we read from left to right and then back to the left and we move to the right and so on and so forth. So the monster's relationship to the stories is that it lives on the left and the language of the story is directly related to its location on the left. So good letters move away as they should from left to right. They move away from the monster and silly letters like S, S is so, so silly, moves toward the monster when we form its letter at the end. You'll also notice that S is so, so silly. There are three exposures to the sound that S makes in that story. We, of course, use the KMP, the motion, to map the sound to the letter, and it is instantly matched with that concrete marker for the learner. That in itself is very, very powerful. So we're developing directionality, stroking, letter ID, and speech to print mapping all in this handwriting routine, which takes just a few minutes a day. We do it all week long, one letter per week, really, really simple. And we are truly developing fluency in handwriting with true muscle memory. So I'm going to let Becky show you the routine where she will start with the letter card. Then she's going to introduce the story of S and who S is to the learner. Then she's going to skywrite it and model it. And then little ones join in. We use the KMP to isolate and identify the sound that the letter makes. And then we have a ton of super fun resources that kids absolutely love, like the handwriting story animation, which reinforces letter ID, sound to symbol mapping, and directionality. Um, we then have interactive activities in the routine where you identify the letter by name, match it to the sound um, using the KMP. Of course, we use that language, show me all the time. And then there are many different independent practice materials, monster whiteboards if you have them. Otherwise, you can print out reading and writing monster paper and you demonstrate and model and then they get to practice, 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 always using the language of the story. We really like to invite them to circle their best um, letter as well and apply their analytical decision-making skills so that they can take an interactive role in their own learning and really decide, well, which one do I like best? Save monster paper and use it as an example of progress and really celebrate that growth and success. Phonics in Motion is all about magic and fun. We harness the energy of little ones and we take advantage of it and we truly honor the child. It is magical time every day. The monster is powerful in his magic because kids absolutely love this. You do not have to fight for their attention spans. They use their bodies and they practice and engage with him. 
when they see letters when they're reading or when you're reading or when you're writing on the language calendar or in the poems, they will say, oh my gosh, there's S. S is so, so silly. It brings language to life for them and there is so much power in that. To teach directionality, don't forget to use language like, don't forget to move away from the monster and that monster pulls you back, but you're going to move away from him, aren't you? We never enter the monster zone. We start next to the monster zone, not in it. If you're new to Phonics in Motion, make sure to go to the Learning Center and learn about how to introduce the reading and writing monster because it is this magic and the fun that makes it so powerful. I do want to mention that we teach with lowercase letters first. When we write, do we write with all uppercase letters? No. So why does it make sense to teach kiddos uppercase letters first? Let's teach them what they use the vast majority of the time. We totally understand that if you do not have the handwriting stories, it's a lot easier to teach uppercase handwriting first because typically there are fewer strokes and they're just easier to write. But if you have the handwriting stories, you don't need to worry about that anymore because it's really easy and it's really fun. So the magic and the character of the letter is introduced with the lowercase handwriting story. After a couple days of really developing the lowercase, then go ahead and introduce the uppercase handwriting story and use the same routine. The uppercase Letters typically have um, differentiating factors about the character of who they are. For example, Q is a queen's child, and the uppercase Q has to do with the lowercase handwriting story. It really makes sense when you do the lowercase first and the uppercase after. We have a ton of independent practice material for both lowercase and uppercase letter cards, poem books, lowercase and uppercase handwriting worksheets, letter ID animations. Of course, we have the lowercase handwriting story animation and the uppercase handwriting story animation as well, which will teach you how to match the language to the stroking and can be a guide and a support for you as the teacher as well. So you wanna lean on those to make sure that when you are doing the handwriting story, you are matching the story to the stroke. And you'll want to learn just one handwriting story per week because that's what you're focusing on. The letter ID animations, pull it all together. The lowercase, the uppercase, and the sound is in that video. And then there are worksheets, the letter ID alphabet strips that work nicely with those as well. So you can very easily stay busy all week long focusing on one letter. And we really just focus on one because we are developing true fluency and muscle memory in handwriting. We do not want them to think about how do I write this letter or all of a sudden they have lost um, hand of what they were writing of the comprehension piece and the concept and the context. So we want to develop that fluency in handwriting and also really make sure that they are mapping speech to print. They know the letter, letter ID is down, stroking is down, they know the sound the letter makes. This is so much more than handwriting. It is really a critical, critical foundation for learning to encode and decode or read and write. Everything in Phonics in Motion is connected. We do not teach in silos. So we make those connections for the brain. Um, when you're writing on the language calendar, you're using the KMP motions. And of course, you're using the handwriting story for the week in your entries. So we're offering repeat exposures and bringing all language to life. When kiddos are reading or when you are doing the poetry routine in the morning and they see that S, they are going to say, oh, there's that silly, silly S. It brings it all to life and there's no more fighting for attention spans. It is just fun, fun, fun. Um, as you already know, everything we do moves from model demonstration toward independent practice. We show it, we explain it, we demonstrate, we think aloud, we talk about it. In skywriting, we model it, and then we invite them to do it with us, and then they can do it on their own. In the literacy routine tab for the reading and writing monster, you will find many materials that we've talked about to develop the handwriting stories. Um, Becky in her modeled routine is going to demonstrate how to do sound boxes because we really, really recommend doing sound boxes 
and blending sounds together along with this handwriting routine um, for connected teaching. So make sure to check that one out. The rest of these are very self-explanatory, so we'll save your time. Go ahead and just download them and start incorporating them in your independent practice. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to Becky. And first, I want to thank you for your commitment to sticking to this and doing it for a few minutes every day with one letter a week. The gains that you will see will be so helpful because of your consistency and commitment to doing this. Okay, thank you, enjoy. Hi boys and girls, I am so excited to tell you about the story of S today. S is so, so silly. What is S? S is so, so silly. So we're gonna learn the handwriting story for S. What letter is this? S. What sound does S make? Show me. S. Okay, so the reason S is so, so silly. Get ready for this. He goes, can you believe it, towards the monster. Then he starts to come away, but he goes right back to that monster. So we're gonna chant the handwriting story and we're going to make the letter S in the air. So get your finger ready. I'm going to turn around and we're going to draw S in the air saying the S story. Here we go. S is so, so silly. He goes toward the monster, comes away and goes right back. How silly is he? Do it with me. Get your finger ready. Do it in the air. S goes towards the monster, comes away, but goes right back to the monster. Now it's time to practice writing S on your monster board. Get out your monster board and remember, on our monster board or a monster paper, here's the monster zone. He is left in the zone. We're gonna do our work over here away from his zone. Let's start by making a letter S in the middle of your paper. Find the middle. Say the story with me. S is so, so silly. He goes towards the monster. He comes away, but then he goes right back. He is so, so silly. Now let's make one in the corner. Find the right hand corner of your monster board. S is so, so silly. He goes towards the monster, comes away, and goes right back to the monster. Now let's make one on the bottom of your paper. Find a spot on the bottom of your paper. S is so, so silly. He goes towards the monster, comes away, and goes right back. Now find a spot on your monster board. You pick and let's make a big one. I have some space right here. S goes towards the monster, comes away and then goes back. He is so, so silly. Now let's make a tiny one. Let's make a tiny one near the top. Find the top. Are you ready? S is so, so silly. Make a little one. He goes towards the monster, comes away, and goes back towards the monster. All right. Now take a look at all those S's that you made. Which one do you think you made the best? Circle it. Great job. What letter did we make today? S. What sound does S make? S. S is so, so silly. Great job. Now we're gonna listen for some sounds in our sound box. We're gonna be listening for three sounds. Here's the reading and writing monster. He is in the zone and we're gonna move away from the monster. Say the word sat, sat. Show me, s-a-t. 
a t. Now let's write the sounds that we hear. What sound do you hear first in the word sat? Show me. S, S is so, so silly. She goes towards the monster, comes away, but goes right back. What do we hear next? S, A. Show me. A. A is an acrobat. She goes towards the monster, comes away, and back down. Ta-da! S, A, T. What do you hear at the end? T is a teenager, up on its tiptoes. S-a-t. Let's write the word underneath. S-a-t. Sat. Great job.